Uh, many don't know, she went to the hospital this week. We had somewhat of a scare, and uh, she came home Friday, and the doctor called us last night, and there's still some things that concern with, and so y'all keep us in prayer, amen? amen. God's bigger than any disease, amen? amen? Hallelujah. That's when we have to stop and trust who God is, amen. trust his faithfulness. You know, he never leaves us or forsakes us. You know, we need to trust his faithfulness. I want to start this morning. I want to really spend some time. We always talk about this time of year. We spend some time talking about the story of Christ and how Mary came along. And, but I think this morning, I really want to bring something out that I, I actually, my father-in-law and I was talking. He came down to see us at the hospital, and him and I was talking about some things. And he, he began to show me some things in the scripture. I guess I never really saw. You know, how sometimes we read things, but never see it. And he pulled some things out, <clears throat> and as he did, I started writing, making some notes, and I went home, and I began to study it and began to look through it. But Joseph, if Joseph, Joseph could have said no. Yes, Let me say it again. We talk about how Mary could have said no, because see, Mary was chosen, and obviously God knew what he was doing when he chose Mary, but Mary was human like you and I, and she could have said no. See, Joseph was a man like you and I, and he could have said no. He could have totally denied. Because, see, here we find Joseph. He's living in a village. He takes on a wife. And all of a sudden now he finds out she's with a child. Now, that has to be devastating for a man. Amen? Amen. Takes his woman on, realizes, you know, he's never been with her. And all of a sudden now she's with a child. And now he's thinking, well, you know what? I'm a just man, so I'm going to put her away without embarrassing her. But all of a sudden, here come God. Come on, God showed up. And see, so he trusted God through this dream. And as he began to trust God through this dream, we realized that God was speaking to him through a dream. But see, we need to trust God through his word. Come on, somebody. Because see, he gave us his word so we can trust him. He gave us his word so we can understand what we need on a daily basis. He gave us his word because you must understand this. And I've said this before. We talk about the Bible, but the Bible, as we call it, if you study theology, you understand they call it the canon of Scripture. And it had three things had to take place. One, it had to be written by a prophet. Two, it had to be inspired by God. But three, it had to be timeless. And see, that's the thing right there that myself, I can't even imagine writing something that could be timeless. What do you mean by that, Pastor? Listen, the fact that they wrote something thousands of years ago that's applicable for us today, the year of 2013, that's a miracle. That's a miracle in itself. Pastor, what do you mean by that? Well, I'm just going to kind of use a phrase. And forgive me if it's an offensive phrase, but, you know, I remember growing up where the word gay was when you said somebody was gay, you said they were a happy, happy person, a gay person. You know, they were, they were fun to be around. And if I wrote the story, and I'll use Kevin since he's sitting on the front row, and, you know, he's there to be picked on, so I could use him to be picked on. But if I wrote a letter to you 25 years ago, 30 years ago, and I wrote the story, and I said, you know, Kevin was a gay man. 25 years later, you read it and you go, man, I thought he was married. I thought, you know, I didn't know he was a homosexual. Come on. Yeah. Now, we, we, we say that, and I want you to, it, it really brings out a great point, because listen, that's just 25 or 30 years. Yeah. Terminology has changed in 25 or 30 years. Can you imagine when you're writing something that could be apical for thousands and thousands and thousands of years to come? Yeah. This application that we have, we call the Bible, the B-I-B-L-E is going to be applicable to our sons and our daughters and our grandsons and our granddaughters. This is the word that we should trust. But we find Joseph. Joseph is trusting. We pick up in the scripture here, and I'm going to read some scripture. We find over in Matthew chapter 1, verse 18. It says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follow. As his mother Mary was bestowed to Joseph, before they came together, she found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, not wanting to put her publicly make a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he, by while he thought about these things, come on, somebody, behold, behold, God shows up. While he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid. Take to you Mary, your wife, for what that she has conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit, and she will bring forth a son. You shall call his name Jesus, Amen. 
for he shall save his people from their sins. Now, we see several places here that I want to pull out. One, he says, he begins right here, he talks about, uh, well, let's see right here. He thought about these things. Now, we know already that our thinking can be sometimes stinking. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. So he had to change his thinking right away. Yeah. Now, for many of us today, we need to change our thinking. If we're going to trust God, we've got to change the way we think about things. Come on. You know that our thinking can change a lot to the bad, to the good. We need to understand that even as he, he was thinking, God said, you know what, Joseph? I'm going to send an angel of the Lord to you to change the way you think. And then he said, don't be afraid. Well, we go back and find out with the scripture later on. He talks about he hasn't given a spirit of fear, but a peace, power, and a sound mind. So these are all things that we can hang on to today through the word of God. Amen? Just these simple things that we find pulling out of the Scripture as he's talking to Joseph here. He goes on to do this right here, and this is one of the errors that Joseph had to trust him in. Joseph had to trust God for correction. Hello? Now, correction is not something easy to trust somebody for. You've got to believe that the person that you're trusting has your best interest at heart. Because, see, none of us want to be corrected. None of us like to be corrected. None of us think correction is really what we need. But let's see what the Scripture says. In Psalms, David is crying out for correction. He says, in you, O Lord, I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. Deliver me in your righteousness. O Lord, my God, in you I, I put my trust. Save me from all these who persecute me and deliver me. Least they tear me like a lion. Render me into pieces. Deliver me. He's got a trust here for correction. Now, the Scripture says... Over in, let me read this in Timothy, 2 Timothy 3.16. It says, all scripture, somebody look at your name and say, all scripture, of God is profitable for doctrine and for rebuke, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. So when we see this right here, first of all, he had to trust him for correction. Now, this is the part that we lose right here. This is where we lose sight of. We think sometimes God don't want us to do things because he don't want us to have any fun. Come on, Come on. that's what we think. We think God, don't, listen, he don't want us to do some things because his correction is fixing to protect us. We can find in a moment he had to trust him for protection. Let's keep going here. Later on, we find out in the scripture. Let's pick up here over in Matthew 12. 22, where he keeps going. He says, and so all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet saying, behold, the virgin shall be with a child and bear a son. They shall call his name Emmanuel, which translates what? God with us. So everything that Joseph did was going to reflect us today, right? Thank God for that. Thank God for his obedience. You know, let me just say this for a moment. Your correction and your obedience can just change the destiny of somebody else's life. We don't want to think about that. And I say that quite often because we're so quick to say, don't look at me, look at God. But your obedience and you walking in correction can change the destiny of somebody else who's watching you. See, we don't want to hear those things because we don't want to feel responsible for somebody else. Can I tell you, sometimes as a pastor, and please, I'm not saying this, feel sorry for a pastor because I wouldn't want to do anything else. God's called me to pastor. I love what I do. But there are times where I feel responsible. I feel pressure. I feel like, you know, sometimes, you know, for you, a lot of you don't know this. Most of the time I come in a sit on the front row and I look for it. I really don't want to sit back there because I don't want to see you. Amen? <laughs> I look for it because I don't want to be distracted by what's going on behind me. But I will tell you this, and some of you might not get this, and that's okay. But as pastor, I sit there in the front row, and many times I can feel the burdens coming in the back door. Yeah. I can feel the heaviness when somebody comes in the back door and they're carrying a load. Maybe they just had a fight on the way to church. Oh, we don't fight on the way to church. <laughs> Listen, you need to be a children church pastor if you don't believe that, amen? Because kids are honest. 
We're going to have prayer this morning, little Johnny Raisin. Pray for my mommy and daddy. My mommy said a bad word. <laughs> they fight on the way to church. Come on, somebody. Yeah, come on, but see, we live in a real world. Yeah, and these are real issues. Yeah. And listen, as a pastor, I feel them sometimes. Yeah. And, and there's times that I don't want, I, I just, I want to be focused because I want to be able to give you what you need to help you through the week. Because see, that's what the body of Christ does. Yeah. God gives us the word for correction. Now, I don't know what you've done. I don't know what you've done at your house. I don't know that you've done this or done that or whatever the case may be, but God does. And see, through correction, through the word, is, it goes like this. The Holy Spirit's job is to lead and guide you into truth. Because somebody on this side over here is thinking, man, did he know I did that? And then somebody on this side over here is thinking, I can't believe he knows that I did that. And it could be totally two different things. You, you follow where I'm going? And see, God's word is, is, does that to us. Listen, if, if you want to get stirred up, begin to read God's word. And, and sometimes stirred up, sometimes not in a real good way, because sometimes if you're not living right, it'll stir you in a way that you won't sleep at night. Come on, somebody. Pastor, why well, well, we don't sleep? Well, you know what? If keeping you awake will help you, then I hope you stay awake 48 hours. Amen? Here's the next thing we find, protection. We find here over in, in Matthew 2.13, he says, Now when he heard, now when he had departed, behold, angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. These are all dreams that Joseph is having. And can you imagine? I mean, Joseph's not having a pizza dream. Come on, somebody. Because some of us could have these pizza dreams, and we think that we can, you know, there's something else, and it's just a pizza dream. Not all dreams are from God. Can I clear that up real quick? Amen? Because I know I've had some dreams, and I know they weren't from God. Amen? Not all dreams are, are from God. He goes on to say, he says, Arise, he's telling Joseph in a dream, Arise, take the young child and his mother, flee to Egypt, and stay there until I bring you the word. For Haran will seek this young child to destroy him. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed for Egypt, and was there until the death of Haran, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt I've called my son. Now, what are we talking about here? Now, he protect him by saying, Listen, I want you to flee to Egypt. Amen. Now, how did he know this? Well, God spoke to him Amen. in a dream. He sent an angel to say, Listen, get out of there. This guy's trying to kill the baby. Okay? So he flees. But see, throughout the Scripture, we find places where God is trying to protect us. Let's read over in Psalms. Psalms 18, verse 1. It says, I love you, Lord. You're my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, my salvation. My God is my rock in whom I find what? Protection. He's my shield, the power that saves me and my place of safety. I call on the Lord who is worthy of praise, and he saved me from my enemies. Listen, if you want protection in your life, learn to cry out to God. Learn to cry out. Listen, you're a kid of the most high God. Do you know that, that sometimes I wonder if when we cry out, God goes, and, and who is that? Because he hadn't heard you cry out in a while. Come on, somebody. You, you know what I'm saying? I'm saying that in, in a joking way because God knows every one of us. He knows every hair on our head. But there's times in our life that we put ourselves in precarious situations, and we sit and we waddle in them because we think that we just should. You know, you don't have to. We don't have to stay in those precarious situations. We can cry out because God is our salvation. He's a rock of our protection. When you need protection in your life, listen, cry out to God, the one who can protect you. God, I need your protection. Yeah. Well, pastor, well, you know, you're the pastor, so you, you know, with Miss Judy being in the hospital, you know, everything, you must have been fine. You must have been eating sandwiches. Everything's cool. No, I'm crying out for protection. Yeah. I'm crying out for safety. I'm crying out for healing. Well, you're the pastor. You know, you should be above all that. Listen, I put my pants on one leg at a time, just like you do. Listen, we need to trust God. I don't care who you are. I don't care what rank you have. I don't care where you come from. There comes a time in our life we need to cry out and trust God for protection. And he will give you that protection. We must understand that just as Joseph, who was a just man, who could have said, you know what, put this woman away. I'm going to find me somebody else. He didn't. He cried out because he believed God. And he trusted God through the angels that sent him. We should trust God through every one of the word that we have. Here's the other thing that we should trust him through. We trust him in the assurance. 
when, when Herod cried out in Matthew 2, Now when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream to Joseph, and saying, Arise, take this young child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel. For those who sought the young child's life are dead. Now listen, that's an assurance by God. He's given him assurance that we're going to find out later some other things changed, so he had to go in a different direction. We're going to find out he's also a God of direction. But I love the fact that he's a God of assurance. Yes. Yes. You might have insurance, or you might be an insurance salesman, but I have assurance. I have assurance that everything's going to be okay. I have assurance that my God's going to protect me. I've got assurance that, you know, no matter where I find myself, no matter, listen, every time I put myself in a bad place, my Father, my God, when I cry out, He gives me a way of escape. He shows me a way out. Because that's what the Scripture promises. Just living a life of assurance. You see, when you're going through tragedy, you might be in the hospital. You might be going through a tragedy where things all around you see just like they're falling apart. And you know what? Deep down inside, it's that assurance that you know that no matter what happens, everything's going to be all right. It's that assurance that we have. Because, see, in our mind, we think the only way that we're going to feel right about it if it happens this way. But, see, with the assurance of God in our life, we understand God... With the assurance you give me, no matter what happens, it's going to be all right. The assurance that we have in Jesus Christ. Listen, we need that assurance in our life. He had that assurance that everything was going to be okay. Do you have that assurance this morning? Maybe you're here today. Maybe, you know, maybe you're doubting. You're, you're, let's just go here for just a moment. Because my mother dealt with this. My mother told me when she first got saved, she dealt with this a lot, and we talked about this a lot. She said for a long time, she used to doubt her salvation. She used to doubt her assurance of her salvation. And she said she would call the pastor, and, you know, and then he would pray with her and say, Darlene, you trusted Jesus. You just be assured that everything's going to be okay. But because of the background, because of the, the denomination she, she was raised in, every time she sinned, she thought she was going to hell. Come on, somebody. But the assurance of Jesus Christ, guess what? Every time I sin, I could call on the Father and he forgives us. Every time I do something, the assurance that I have, it doesn't matter what I've done, even though the world looks and says, man, that's horrible, the assurance I've got is going to be all right. The assurance that we find in Jesus, just as Joseph found this assurance. The last thing here we find here over where, I tell you what, let me just read with, with a definition of assurance here. It's a state of being assured, freedom from doubt and uncertainty. As a theologian's concept, assurance is one of the richest doctrines of the Bible. It refers to the believer's full confidence and conviction that the penalty of his sins has been paid. Thank you, Lord. And that heaven's been secured as his eternal destiny by Christ's death and resurrection. That's assurance, amen? True assurance. And here's the last thing we find in Matthew 22. Matthew 2, 22. I'm sorry, we're still in the first part of Matthew. When he heard that Boudreaux was leaving Leesville, instead of his father, Heron, he was afraid to go there. And being warned by God in a dream, he turned aside to the region of Galilee. And he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth that he might be fulfilled what was spoken by the prophet he shall be called a Nazarene. Now, why would you read that, Pastor? Because God is a God of direction. Yes. God said, listen, I'm going to give you the assurance that everything's going to be okay. I want you to leave now because he's dead now. But guess what? We're going to bring you into a different direction because that direction is not a good place for you to go. Yes. See, the Bible says, and let me read this. Let me read this because I don't want to mess it up. This is read over in the, in the Living Translation, Psalms 37, 21. It says, the wicked borrows... And does not repay. But the righteous shows mercy and gives. For those blessed by him shall inherit the earth. But those cursed by him shall be cut off. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And he delights in his ways. Though he falls, 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 he shall not be utterly cast down. Though you fall. You see, here's what happens many times. We fall, and we get up, and then we make the same mistake twice, and we think, well, I'm just going to give up. 
Listen, though he falls, no matter time, time, listen, I tell people all the time, I take two positions. I'm either up or I'm getting up. Amen. Though he fall, he shall not utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. Isn't that good to know Amen. that God has us in his right hand? He says, I have been young and now I'm old, yet I've not seen the righteous forsaken or his descendants begging bread. He is even merciful. He is ever merciful and lends, and his descendants are blessed. Now, I've used this reference before because I talk about the scriptures being one of my favorite. You know, he says, I've been young and now I've never seen the righteous forsaken or seed begging for bread, as it reads in, in the King James. And that scripture for me became so real when I was in Russia. And some of you know this, and if you heard it, that's okay. We have new people that hadn't heard it. But we were missionaries to Russia. And you got to understand, when we were there in the 90s, Russia was a, not a good place to be. Russia at that time in the 90s, you know, it, it was pretty rough. It was, you know, we had to get what they call in the bread line. And many days we'd have to wait in the bread line to even get bread. And I never forget, because I used to get bread, and I carried a little bag on my, my, my little, like a little book bag, but I carried groceries in the book bag. You know, wherever I go, whatever I found, I threw it in the book bag. And so many times I would just pick up a loaf of bread when I could find it, and I would throw it in my book bag, and I would carry it wherever I went. And several times it happened to me, but when it happened to me, God revealed the Scripture so plain to me. As I'm in the marketplace, and this old man walks up to me, and in Russian he says, Esfinite He says, excuse me, please. A dean, he's asking for one. He said, Klib Vajosta. He said, can I have some bread? And as I reached in my bag and I gave him some bread, that scripture became so real to me because he says, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or seed begging for bread. Now, I'm going to tell you something. You live in America. Brother, it's in God we trust, and it's the righteousness of our ancestors is what we're walking in today. Never forget that. Never forget it's the righteousness of our fathers who cried out on the halls of justice, who prayed on the halls of justice and cried out for justice. That's what we're riding on today. It's the righteous. I've never seen the righteous forsaken or seed begging for bread, realizing that that country, as old as it is, it wasn't built in God we trust. Come on, somebody. Listen, but thank God we were able to bring the gospel. And there's a lot of people, thousands and thousands of people who got saved in Russia. And guess what? Now they can build a generation off of in righteousness. Listen, folks, we live in a time that we need to know what the Word of God says. And we need to trust what the Word of God says. Everything that you read in the Scripture is not just for your entertainment. It's not just so you can say, well, that sounds good. It's so you can read it and go, you know what? I'm going to live by that. I'm going to trust that. See, this morning, there's so many things we can trust God in. We need to trust him with our talents. We need to trust him with our time. We need to trust him with our treasures. See, we want to trust him with everything else but those things. See, we need to trust God when we know that we've done wrong. We can trust him for that refreshing that comes through repentance. We need to trust God that no matter what situation we are in, we can put Satan under our feet. This is how we need to trust God. Trust him in all those areas of our life. Do you trust him this morning? Are you in a place in your life where you say, you know, no matter what happens, I'm going to trust God for all these situations? We need to trust. This is Joseph trusted. Now, again, I want to... Say this again just to get my point across. Joseph was a man just as you and I. Joseph was a man that didn't have to trust. He could have said no. Again, let me say it again. He could have said no, but he trusted. And because he did, because of what Joseph did, we're now riding on those blessings of Joseph because of what he did that day. Now, thank God for that. But I'm going to tell you, maybe not on the scale of Joseph, maybe not on the large scale of Joseph, but maybe on the scale of your home, fathers. Come on, somebody. Yes. Maybe on the scale of your fathers. Listen, on your home, fathers. Maybe, maybe, maybe your, your trust and your decisions that you're making today, Daddy, it's going to change your family. 
Maybe the decisions you're making today, mama, is going to change your family. Listen, maybe you're here today and you say, well, my mom and dad don't serve the Lord. I come as a teenager. I come as a young person because somebody invites. My family is not a Christian. Listen, because of the decisions you make today, because of the decisions you, listen, God will honor those things today. When you trust God with those things today, listen, my mother, who was one of the first ones saved in our family, who had eight brothers and sisters, and out of that, she was the first one saved. Because of that, my grandmother got saved in her 60s. My grandfather got saved. Mom tells a story about my grandfather when he's, he was dying on his deathbed, and I can't say it in French. I wish I could. But in French, right before he died, he was crying out. And he looked up, and he said, Oh, Jesus, I didn't know your hands were so big. And I thought, wow, what a legacy to leave behind who got saved in a late age of his life. But he cried out, laying on his bed, his deathbed, to look up and say, Jesus, I didn't know your hands were so big. And it was all because of my mother who decided to trust God at that time in her life. You never know how you're going to affect somebody today. You never know how your decision this morning is going to affect somebody tomorrow. Let's make the right choices. Let's make right choices this morning that's going to affect our family. Let's make the right choices that's going to affect our future. Father, we thank you this morning. I thank you for every man, woman, and child in this place. And God, I pray you begin to touch them. God, I pray whatever they stand in need of, you're God that provides. Maybe one of the areas, heads bowed, eyes closed... Maybe one of the areas that I talked about, Joseph, he had to trust him in correction. He had to trust him in protection. He had to trust him in an assurance. And he had to trust him in direction. Maybe you're here today and you say, Pastor, one of those areas is where I'm at. I need to trust God in direction, protection, assurance. Maybe one of those areas that I spoke about. Maybe that's an area that you're dealing with this morning. Well, I want to pray for you. Heads bowed, eyes closed, no one looking around. I'm not going to call you out. I'm not going to embarrass you. I just want to pray for you. I want to come in agreement with you this morning. I want to come and mix my faith with your faith this morning. Maybe one of those areas that we spoke about today, the same area Joseph had to trust, you have to trust. If that's an area in your life this morning that you need to trust God in, I want to pray with you today. Heads bowed, eyes closed, right where you're at. Just raise your hand and put it back down. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Anyone else? Just raise your hand and put it back down. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Anyone else? Just put your hand up and put it back down. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Spiritual God. Thank you, Jesus. Anyone else? Thank you, Father. Father, I thank you this morning that, God, we come in a place that we can mix our faith together. As brothers and sisters all in this place, just begin to pray. Just pray right with you. Yeah, just begin to pray. Brothers and sisters, begin to pray together. God, I pray for every hand that was lifted. God, you know the circumstance. God, you know if their prayer is for protection or direction or assurance. God, whatever it is this morning, God, I pray that you'll begin to fulfill it. God, I pray you begin to touch them. God, I pray that whatever they stand in need of, you're God that provides. God, you have said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or seed begging bread. And God, I thank you that we can stand on that promise. And I thank you that every promise here today that we cry out for, God, you're a God that provides every one of them. So God, I thank you as we mix our faith together that you're going to give our brothers and sisters strength and in every area that they need in their life, whatever it is, you'll do it. So Father, I thank you for that. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Maybe you're here this morning. Maybe you came here this morning and say, Pastor, I've never accepted Jesus as my Savior. Maybe you're here today and you say, Pastor, there was a time when I was serving the Lord, but I realized that I'm just backslidden, and I want to get that right today. Listen, right there between you and God, pray this from the heart. Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Jesus, come into my life. Jesus, I repent today. Jesus, I pray today you come and live in my heart. Jesus, you're mine and I'm yours. Jesus, 
from this day forward, I'm going to serve you. Jesus, from this day forward, you're mine. I'm yours. I won't leave. Jesus, thank you for saving me. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Just for a moment. Not going to embarrass you again. Just want to pray for you. Maybe you prayed that prayer for the first time. Or maybe it's a prayer of rededication. Doesn't matter. Just want to pray for you. If you prayed that prayer this morning, right where you're at, just slip up your hand and put it back down. Slide it up and up back down. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Anyone else? Thank you, Jesus. Hands all over. Anyone else? Just want to pray for you. Anyone else? Thank you, Jesus. Father, I thank you this morning. God, for touching hearts and touching lives. God, I thank you that people will leave here today. God, they'll never be the same. God, I pray that you allow them to be plugged in. God, I pray that you put godly men and women around them. God, that speak influence into their life. And God, I thank you today that we have the scripture that we can fall back on, that we can trust the word. God, I trust the word. I trust every word in the word. And God, blessings be upon that today. We thank you for loving us. We thank you for all that you've done for us. We honor you. We worship you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. If you received that word, let's give God a hand this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord.